Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of plasma filaments dancing around the limbs, as you see here. We've got tons of top news to hit today as well, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. Coming to 171 angstroms first to find a lack of brightness. No bright spots means no active regions, sunspots, or flaring. And so now we come back to 193 angstroms to highlight the difference those 22 little angstroms of light make to our visibility. Strong coronal hole signatures here, Earth magnetically connecting with a trailing northern opening later today or tomorrow. Meanwhile, the lead grouping should have its solar wind arrive here shortly. In fact, it might already be here. Now, the official call on this is a smaller stream out ahead of that coronal hole stream we were just looking for. It's very weak as it peaked where yesterday's peak did. And while geomagnetism remains quiet, we should indeed expect further stream intensifications within 36 hours. Let's go to New South Wales. Strong dust storm came through, closed roadways, caused a few minutes of panic for those caught outside. It didn't matter if you were outside or in yesterday in Albania, you started shaking. Numerous rumbles, including a nice blot echo nearby in Italy. Considerable damage, considering the magnitude peaked at only 5.6. Dozens reported injured, and cleanup is underway. Also want to mention ground cracks and explosions heard near the mud volcano in Trinidad. The region is seeing lasting unrest as a whole, with multiple blood echoes striking the region yesterday as well. There are no evacuations just yet. Let's go to a quantification of how much the sun's magnetic field has begun to decline from the grand solar maximum of the last century towards the grand solar minimum of this century. Detailed look in solar physics points at an 11 to 22 percent drop in magnetic energy thus far, combined with similar drops in scintillation. Let's next go out to Mars for a tremendously interesting work. Not only does the nighttime magnetosphere of Mars pulsate unexpectedly to a considerable degree, but the crust of the red planet is far more magnetized than anyone could have believed. Furthermore, a highly conductive layer more than two miles thick exists deep below the surface. FYI, that's as deep as the Pacific. Here on Earth, the subterranean biosphere outweighs the life on the crust, and if life ever existed on Mars, it may still exist locked deep below the surface in not too dissimilar conditions to those in which it existed when Mars had oceans and an atmosphere. Quick note, IOP science went down last night and is still down this morning. That's the Astronomical Journal, Astrophysical Journal, and the Astrophysical Journal letters. Has been a rough month for them. As you'll recall, they complained about Google's presentation of the American Astronomical Society journals a few weeks ago. We all remember Comet 67P, right? Interesting new study out after completion of all mission data includes something that used only tiny pieces of it. Before and after shots of outbursting zones on the comet clearly reveal something major happened in those regions, and the wider angle cameras on the Rosetta spacecraft indeed identified those locations as the ones from which the outburst came. In a fantastic move by solar terrestrial physicists, they're beginning to understand the mechanisms of space weather effect on hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones, and the like. It's cloud forcing, modulating ocean heating, and geomagnetic energy directly heating the atmosphere. We're way beyond statistics now. They're discovering how it all works. And by the way, our students' national championship winning project in 2017 was on this exact topic. More on young Ferris Wald in just a moment. Because right now we've got to head out into star-forming regions. Molecular clouds of gas and dust and plasma. And of course, magnetic fields. Today we get a titanic statement of the scientific field. It is the magnetic field's effect on star formation that is now evident and recognized as crucial from the cloud phase to the sculpting of the region to the disk and torus feature dynamics before the stellar ignition. And the universality of these new ideas found among all studied subjects in space, all of them, magnetism and plasma. So folks, that student of ours was again Ferris Wald. And if you are relatively new here and are reconciling the climate news, cosmology, space weather, earthquake forecasting, and now a national championship, maybe you need a bit better idea where you are. On suspiciousobservers.org, there are some excellent ways to get to know what you've stumbled upon, who we are, and basically the mission statement version of that, raise the standard. We greatly appreciate your support. If you haven't seen all those free videos on our website homepage, it is very much worth it. Website members, you had your fly-on-the-wall podcast come out yesterday. 
We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.